Live from the ASBMR 2013 Annual Meeting, ASBMR President Linda Bonewald and Program Co-Chairs Richard Eastall and Lori McCauley discuss the hottest developments in the field. So, uh, Lori, I wanted to ask you first, what was your favorite session for this year's annual meeting? Well, I have to say I enjoyed all aspects of the meeting this year, but I was particularly pleased with the Avioli lecture. Um, I think Jane Lynn did a fabulous job of bringing in the basic epigenetic mechanisms and translating that to clinical relevance, um, leaving us with the question about really what we don't know about epigenetic mechanisms and osteoporosis. Um, it was intriguing to hear about some of her work with the RUNCS binding sites, 60,000 sites and 7,000 genes, and really just how she translated all these mechanisms into potential clinical applications. It was fabulous. Okay. okay. And Richard, for you? Yeah, so for me it was the uh, session on the WINCE signaling pathway where we talked about how this has been discovered in, through, through human genetics and then moved all the way through to the treatments that we now have with the sclerosin antibody. And the whole thing was put in perspective by the opening lecture that we had from Professor Nusser, who actually told us about the understanding of the wind signaling pathway from other tissues like skin mm -hmm. and muscle. So right. uh, two ex excellent uh, uh, sessions on wind signaling. Right, okay. Um, my next question is, were there any surprises this year for you? Well, I have to say I was pleasantly surprised with the osteocyte session, in particular work uh, coming from Sarah Dallas's lab, where she's just doing really some beautiful imaging of osteocytes and showing with GFP labeling how these cells can move, sense their environment. Um, she spoke about a dendrite exploratory behavior where osteocytes will interact with other cells in the environment to, to position themselves, mm -hmm. and um, as well, uh, another new finding that she shared with us with the microvesicles that these cells shed and can be found in the circulation. Mm -hmm. The videography she showed was really absolutely beautiful. It was really nice. Great. Thank you. Mm. So the clinicians like myself were looking for uh, new treatments for diseases and mm -hmm. there was an outstanding presentation about the use of the anti-FGF23 mm -hmm. antibody right. for use in X-linked hypophosphatemia and uh, that, that, that raises so much hope for the future yes. mm -hmm. of the treatment of childhood rickets. And the other uh, area, which is what we're, we're going to hear about today, are the new treatments for osteoporosis. So I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, okay. Um, what, what was the hottest thing going on at the meeting? What, what's the underlying buzz uh, for this mm -hmm. year? Well, I think if you just look at numbers of abstracts, the WINTS really um, have a, a big portion of the uh, abstract presentations at the meeting, nearly 120 abstracts on WINCE, um, as Richard indicated, and, and really strong abstracts from the basic all the way through to the clinical. The other area, um, osteocytes, uh, 177 abstracts on osteocytes. So. Quite an expansion. Yeah. Yeah, so, so for me the, the buzz has been the interactions of other tissues with bone, and I'll particularly highlight the interactions of fat and bone. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed the lecture uh, from Dr. McDougald all about the interaction of marrow fats, because mm -hmm. I hadn't appreciated just the importance of marrow fat and the production of adiponectin. Um, and uh, from another session, uh, Dr. Rosen also spoke about the interaction of fat and muscle with the bone. And again, picking out these really important pathways of which I really hadn't been so aware. Uh, very much aware of, mm -hmm. yes, okay. And uh, what did you feel about uh, this year's clinical debate? Yeah, so the clinical debate uh, this year was, uh, was exceptional. The two um, speakers uh, really brought out the key issues about treating uh, chronic kidney disease and the osteoporosis that often attends it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we chose the debate because we recognize that the evidence base isn't so strong. And the two speakers really, really addressed this question of just how, how much evidence do we have uh, what is, what, in what situation is it safe to treat this condition and in which situations is it not? And so that, that, that teaching point came across really clearly. Okay. Well, I want to thank you both. Uh, and again, thank you for serving as this year's co-organizers. Thank you. Yep. Access the latest in bone education online 
including these highlights from the ASBMR 2013 Annual Meeting and the ASBMR Education Resource Center at www.asbmr.org.